All right, uh, we've got a lot of material to cover here in the next several minutes. In fact, we've got about 40 minutes and I've got 96 slides. So uh, you might as well fasten your seatbelts. And Gary, I love the way you did it. I'm, I'm going to be doing this way a lot. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Palm Beach Lakes. Where do we come from? Uh, if you go back to 1923, you'll find the beginning of this congregation. You may not recognize, but you know, uh, we are uh, within just a very few years of being 100 years old. And uh, so the church has a lot of history. The church began in 1923 in the home of a, of a sister by the name of Lena Eads, a member of the church, and there were some other members of the church, and so uh, they decided to, uh, uh, to, to let the church start meeting in this area. And we, uh, we don't know a lot of information about that. We don't have any of the uh, uh, members who met in that home, but uh, we have... Uh, uh, those uh, others, uh, we have the children of some of those members that were here, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, some of those. Jerry Hopkins' uh, dad, uh, 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 Doc Hopkins, was, was uh, met in that home, and I, I don't know, did uh, 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 Bill, did your mom and dad, did they meet with Sister Eid? You what? All right, and Bill says it was in 22, so uh, we've got to have a, a real uh, tug of war here, I guess, to find out exactly when it was, but the date we have on our records was, uh, was 23. And so in, uh, in September, they, by that time, they had uh, had land donated to have a building. A, a brother by the name of Chamberlain donated the land for the building, and so down on Coniston Road, uh, there was a church that was built, and uh, it was the, uh, the first building that was owned by this congregation. Now, we have here a list of uh, a lo all of the preachers who were, were there at Coniston Roads. And, I'm, uh, and uh, some of these names you may recognize, but it's not likely you'll recognize any of them. Unless, uh, well, it, if you recognize any of these names, you've got to be above, what, 65 years of age or something to recognize uh, in, any of these names. And uh, the thing that impressed me about trying to put all of these 90 slides together is how many names are involved in it. This church is not just from, from one individual or one family. It is the work of just lots and lots and lots of people. And so in 1948, a brother by the name of Iverson Bowles was preaching uh, at the congregation. And, uh, 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 and, and well, let me get down, to, skip about three slides. And so about 1947, I'm not sure exactly when that land was donated by a sister by the name of Bertie Walden and a gift of $10,000 from Sister Eads made possible the church building and the preacher's house on North Olive. And so we have here a list of, uh, uh, of uh, the, those preachers uh, and, and, and uh, those individuals who, uh, uh, who were preaching as a part of that, of that work uh, uh, on, on, on North Olive. I, let's have a slide out of place here because I've got next to the slide of the preachers on 36th Street, and I don't know how it got out of that place. But uh, just go to that slide that said the land was donated by Sister Bertie and, uh, and, a, and a donation. And so in June of 1949, there was the first meeting of the, in the, of the church in that new building on North Olive. And there are slides and pictures of that out, outside in the foyer. And the history of the church really is glorious, and we've got a lot more information about the kinds of things that were happening, because um, uh, uh, Ray Duncan began became became a, a preacher. If you go up go up one slide, and you'll have the names of those preachers that were there: Iverson Bowles and John Renshaw and Hugh Piper and Eugene Pitts and W. B. Black and Bert Brown and uh, and Ray Duncan. And all of a sudden, when you get to the name of Ray Duncan, you talk about this church really exploding and starting to grow. He was, a, he was an unusual person, great Bible teacher. Many, many, the, peop, the older members that know a lot of Bible in this church, uh, many of them started down that road whenever Ray Duncan was here. He was a great, great Bible teacher. And, and so, in, uh, uh, in 1961, go down one slide, in 1961, he had that television program. And if you'll go back to 1961 and recognize to the amazement of every young person here, perhaps every 130 years of age, nobody liked National League football. It was all baseball. 
And so uh, uh, the church was able to get the time back when there was just, uh, what, about only two or three television stations in all of West Palm Beach. I'm not sure exactly how many. And right before the Saturday baseball game came on was a program called Know Your Bible. And Ray Duncan was involved uh, in that. And uh, it was a call-in program. And so you could call in and ask Bible questions, and he would answer the Bible questions and everything. And we do have some videos of uh, uh, 16, mill 16 millimeter movies that uh, Mike Erickson moved over to some uh, 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 VHS tapes and that type of thing. And so uh, we, we have seen some of those. I never saw the program. It's amazing, though, there's a young man named Jerry Hopkins in one of those videos. And he's there uh, at the phones, answer, ready to answer the questions. So uh, this is when Ray Duncan there, and the church went to two services. It was outgrowing that building on North Olive. And that building was just, uh, if you go to um, uh, Good Sam Hospital, where, where North Olive runs in, into uh, the road that's there, just right, you know, what, two or three block, two or three houses off there was where that church building was. So in June of 63, Five acres were purchased on 36th Street. Now, the church had also looked at the possibility of starting a congregation in Lake Park. In fact, there were two pieces of property that uh, the church looked at. But finally, in 1963, the five acres that, were, that became a part of the 36th Street congregation, the land cost $40,000. Is that remarkable? Just think of that, uh, the price of land there, and to get five acres right there, uh, that close to uh, where downtown, well, it wasn't exactly where downtown uh, West Palm Beach was, but because it was right on the edge of, of where West Palm Beach was at that time. And the building only cost $250,000. And that building that many of us worshiped in um, happened at that place. We do have a record. We've talked about this. I ran across a record of uh, 1964. There was a New Year's Eve singing. And I'm not sure it was the first one, just in the record of what happened in 64. There's a record there that said we had a New Year's Eve singing. I'm not sure if that's the first one we've had, but we said every year, you know, uh, how many years have we done this? If it started in 64 and, uh, and we are in 16, how many years? Is that, 50, is that 52 years or something like that, that we've had that New Year singing together? So in December, there was the groundbreaking for the building on 36th Street. And on uh, July the 18th, was when we first met at 1111 11, 36 Street, and that's where we moved into that building. Now, all of a sudden, uh, as we get into that building, there, there we arrive at a point where now the church has elders. Sometimes we think that you can just start a church and have elders almost immediately, but it's a long time from 1923 to 1964. Uh, was that 41 years before the church has its first elders? and? Do you recognize any of these names? Gene McMasters, a member of this congregation who passed away within the last couple of years. And there's somebody by the name of Milton here. Does anybody know any Miltons that, uh, that are part of this congregation? Uh, uh, that's uh, uh, Chuck and Cheryl's dad and, uh, and, and Ruth's husband, Don Spurlock and Alvin Witt. Those are names some of you will remember. And the first deacons were appointed. Johnny Davis, Bob Haynes. Um, and Jerry Hopkins and Paul Jordan were the first deacons. And there's a photo of those individuals out there in, uh, uh, in the display that's out in the foyer. Ran across this record also of us sending a missionary named Marcus Cruz to Australia. I, I knew of some names in connection with that work in Australia, but uh, his, this was a new name to me. But that shows his church has always been involved in mission work. In October of 65, Pete Brown, Lowell Flowers, who is now a member of this congregation, uh, Bill Ingram, that's senior, a uh, member of this congregation, Charles Cup, Tom Mitchell, Bill Powell, and Doug Renahan also became uh, deacons in the church. And then in March of 67, that TV program ended. Interesting enough, in 1967, Marshall Keeble preached in a gospel meeting on 36th Street. The, uh, it was in connection with the congregation that is now, I guess we'd call it the Third Street Congregation. I think they were on 18th Street back at that time. And so in connection with them, uh, 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 Brother Marshall Keeblin, and we talk so much about him as being such a great preacher, he preached at this congregation. I was amazed as I went through all of this of all of the individuals that's preached here. I mean, some, some, of, the, some, some of the preachers that uh, very few people have ever heard, and you'd, you'd, I'd find it remarkable 
that this isolated away from where the church is numerically much stronger, I find it remarkable that, uh, that we've uh, had so many of the uh, better known preachers to be a part of the work here. Uh, Bill Hatcher started a TV program. I had no knowledge of that until I was working on, on this. Missionary Dane Wagner. Dane was uh, uh, Russell's son, and he went to Puerto Rico, and we were involved in supporting him. Harold Keithley was appointed an elder in 1970, Jerry Hopkins in 71, and Fred Faulkner in 1972. I remember uh, Bill Ingram, uh, you talking about how much uh, help Fred Faulkner was you in helping you learn to, how to be an, an elder and what a responsibility those who are elders have toward those who will someday be elders to help, help train them. In 1968, August of 68, Ray Duncan resigned as a preacher of this congregation and Bill Hatcher began preaching. And uh, uh, in, in the next year, we sent a missionary, Gerald Pace, to Australia. Uh, in February, there's that uh, TV program with Bill Hatcher. And uh, th then uh, got some, some of these are repeated. Uh, in a April of 73, that zone program. Remember when we had the four groups, the four zones? And the, when in 36th Street, we, uh, the, the family groups that we have, we called them zone groups. And we, we met in the four corners of that building that was over there. And that was an outstanding way and fabulous attendance. You remember the involvement sheets we used to figure out, fill out, and every week you'd tell, you'd tell uh, how many people you'd called and, and that type of thing. It was just all of us to help, our, help us check with each other, and that worked so extremely well for, for a long time. And then, like many programs, it sort of dwindles off and uh, it was replaced. Uh, we sent mission, uh, Missionary Pace, and I didn't have his name, to Australia, and he died I, uh, uh, in, uh, in Australia. In June of 73, new deacons were appointed. Gerald Bobo, Jesse Ford, Dwayne Lanham, Gary Morton, and Russell Wagner. Now all of a sudden you may be, begin recognizing some of these names. And so all of that happened in 73. In 74, missionary Ray Wynn went to Australia. And then also in 74, Dean Reynolds began the work at Palm Beach Lakes. Dean was an older retired preacher. And uh, Dean's work primarily was just go and visit all of the shut-ins and those who were sick and everything. And uh, does anybody remember Dean's way of announcing on Wednesday night about uh, who all was sick? He'd call a name and he'd say, they're about the same. And he'd call the next name and they're about the same. And the next name, he'd call the next name. He'd been visiting all week long. You go through 20 names and at the, after every one of them, they're about the same. And I've, I just, as I remember that, I remember conducting uh, Dean's uh, a funeral, and I, the theme of the de of dean's funeral was he's about the same. Uh, what a great, great ashlady he was, and loved, and he he uh, he helped unify this church just by his own personality that was here. And then Kerry Kane, who uh, um, uh, began his work also at Palm Beach Lakes, and Bill Hatcher began preaching less, and Kerry Kane began preaching more. I had met Kerry Kane in New Zealand before he ever was a part of uh, of of this congregation, and. Uh, he, in many respects, uh, I believe, helped pull this church together. He and his wife, just their warmth of their personality. And uh, uh, I, I, I asked, I think it was the Ingrams, when did this church get so close? When I moved down here, this church loved each other. And I was trying to figure out when and how. And some of you older members may be able to, uh, to figure out what the catalyst was. Because this church is close to each other. And that's why I have these visitors who've been away for years to have uh, to have them come back, and so that's great. Um, in uh, 1975, June Haynes became church secretary. And I thought she, uh, well, before that she had worked for Noah, keeping the attendance in the ark. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, it, 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 June will, I, I, will, I, will, I will suffer from this, but uh, actually, uh, uh, June started keeping the attendance in uh, 1955. And so, uh, for, you know, I tried to count up how many attendance cards uh, she has handled over all of those years, and I got it 300,000, and I thought I've made, a, ma made a, a mess with the wrong number and everything. But uh, it's, it's remarkable I, the, the debt this church owes to her uh, because she's bridged the gap and kept a lot of preachers, uh, uh, I, I won't say kept them in line, but certainly, certainly was a tremendous asset and all that. Did. And that's to say nothing at all uh, negative about the other secretaries who were here. And uh, there was uh, Frankie Mitchell and there was, who was here before Frankie Mitchell was here? 
I can't remember. I saw that name. And then, of course, Mary in Holland was a, uh, was, a, was a secretary for how many years? 10, 12, 15 years? I, I, 20-something years, all right. And uh, in 75, new elders were appointed. Anybody know the name Jesse Ford? Uh, new deacons, Doug Carmack and Tom Holliday. And uh, in 76, uh, my first introduction to Palm Beach Lakes, we were in uh, Birmingham working on those flashcards for Bible class programs. And so the church invited me to come down and uh, got to tell the church how to use those flashcard Bible programs that were used for, for some time after that. And uh, I remember not a lot about being here at this church, except I remember Bob Haynes and Bob chasing me out across the parking lot to, tell, to make sure he spoke to me before, before uh, we drove away. And I remember others and everything, but I especially remember that. In 76, new elders were added, Johnny Davis and Joe Holland. That's a lot of years for uh, those individuals to, to be elders. And, uh, and many, does anybody remember Buddy Lawrenson, the missionary that we sent to South Africa? Uh, I thought it was interesting in view of that baby class that we have, that for those little children that are six months old, how long has that thing been around? Since 1978, that baby curriculum class was there. Bill Hatcher uh, was involved in a school of spiritual development that he taught here. He taught it in Alaska and taught it in other places, but it became a part of the, the church's educational program. It met, uh, and I forget, the, it met uh, on a Sunday morning. I think there was a Monday night class and at times there was a Tuesday morning class, maybe a Tuesday night class, a Wednesday night class, and a Thursday night class. And uh, I tell a lot of people that I, I'm still uh, plucking the fruit off of the trees that Bill Hatcher planted in this church because the, the Bible knowledge of those older members in this church, uh, Bill Hatcher was really, really involved in, 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 in all the things that, that enable us to be able to, to have great, to be uh, real, real great Bible students. And so uh, we owe him a debt. Bill Hatcher worked at this congregation for about 14 years, and we owe him a debt. But in 1980, he resigned as being the preacher here, but he was still associated with this work here in that School of Spiritual Development. And, uh, but it was also in that same year that Kerry Kane moved to Lake City, Florida, and a fellow by the name in September 1980, Glenn Lee, remember Glenn, came and uh, preached here for, uh, at Palm Beach Lakes for, um, for uh, well, for about 18 months. In, uh, in November of 1980, Bill Ingram was appointed an uh, elder in this church, as was Dwayne Lanham. And so when uh, I came down to become a part of Palm Beach Lakes, the, there were five elders, and uh, uh, Dwayne Lanham and Bill Ingram and uh, uh, Johnny Davis and uh, Harold Keithley was, was, was another one, and Joe Holland were the elders. In January of 82, I began uh, my work with Palm Beach Lakes, and Glenn Lee left in uh, April of that year. In October of that year, uh, uh, new deacons were added. Somebody remarked to me about the fact that uh, he preached in a meeting here in Palm Beach Lakes, uh, he said, that's the Eatonist church on earth. They have, more, um, they have more deacons than most church got garbage cans. And so I, I went out, I came home after he said that and counted, we had uh, eight garbage cans and uh, we had 13 deacons at that time. And so we now got 20 deacons and a dumpster. So I think we're, <laughs> I think we're still uh, in focus in relationship to, to, to where we are. In, uh, in 1983, uh, the church purchased the property for the, uh, for, for the work up in Jupiter. And so there was a, work, a plan to split, spread that church up into Jupiter. And so uh, we, were, uh, we uh, were part of buying that property that was there. What about the day of victory, painting of the building on 36th Street? How many of you were involved in that painting? I, I want you to hold up your hands. What an, uh, well look, there's Greg over there. Hi Greg and, and Michelle. Yeah, what a great, great day that was. Uh, uh, once before, and I found, by the way, a record, uh, looking at the record of the church of how some years before the deacons had uh, tried to paint the building, and this is not to mock them at all because they got it painted, but the older deacon says, you can't do this. You, you know, the new deacon said, let's go, let's go paint this building in a hurry. We can do this in a day's time. We've just got enough people to show up. And the older deacon sort of shook their head because they said, the first day we tried it, we didn't do it all in one day, had about 25 people to show up. And the, and the next Saturday, we had about 15 to show up, and, and about four or five weeks later, we fi finished painting the building, you know, with just a handful of people. And all of a sudden, this church bought into the fact, let's do it in one day. 
And uh, so uh, we started painting uh, that building. And if you look on, on the display that's out there, when we arrived here at 7 or 7.30 in that morning, the people in those apartments uh, called the television station and called the uh, newspaper and said, you've got to get out here. I've never seen anything like this. There were, there were 300 members of this church, like a swarm of bees, uh, painting all of that building. We had some folks that uh, were home making ice cream. They were bringing it by about 3 or 4 o'clock that afternoon, about 10.30 or 11.00. I called and said, get that ice cream down here. We're going to be finished before lunch. And so in half a day, we painted all of that building. Even a little five-year-old kid, you couldn't drop a drop of paint. Little five-year-old kid running around, run around with a rag. And uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a great day. And I, I believe it marked a, a time when this church really started believing in itself. September of 83, Joe Alcock was added uh, as, a, uh, as a deacon. Steve Ellis, uh, began working with us in, in 84, and he, I include him here and, and have left out some of, the, some of the others, but we've been involved in supporting individuals at schools of preaching over, uh, over several years, and, and we were involved. In Deacon, uh, Steve Ellis was a member of this church. We wanted to go to school of preaching, and so we helped him go to the school of preaching. After him was Jay Winter. He also went to the school of preaching, and we, uh, we helped support him. And so a part of what we do... Uh, uh, when sometime, usually when we send somebody to school of preaching, if we're heavily involved, we ask them to come back and work with us as an intern for a while. And so, so Steve was here. Uh, new deacons were added, a fellow by the name of Jeff Leslie and the name Red Springer. Does that bring back a lot of memories to you? And so uh, in, in October of 84, the Jupiter congregation began when 47 of our members uh, went up to become a part uh, of that congregation. And uh, it was such a glorious period of time. Within a year's time, we'd, we'd, we, had, we had gained enough new members that uh, didn't even miss, in, at least in numbers, did not miss those who had become a part of that Jupiter work. Uh, it was in that period of time that uh, one, month, one year we had 40 baptisms, another year we had 48 baptisms, and you know we've had as few as eight baptisms in a year, and uh, I, I hope that's not indicative of the fact we were not trying the Lord did not send us to send us see how many we could baptize, see how many we could teach. And so uh, if, the, if, the, if the fruit is not necessarily visible, let's not get discouraged as whether the seed is being planted. Don Hickerson 80, uh, in 84 became an elder, a uh, new deacon by the name of Jim Whiteside in 84. In 85, new deacons, Jim Howell, Dave Holliday, Dan McLeod, Jerry Pittman, and Jim Rogers. Anybody? Now then we're beginning to recognize some names of folks who are still here at this congregation. And let me say again, the, the history of this church is a his, history of names. And it's really important for us uh, to be aware of that. Uh, Bruce DeMoss began work with the congregation in, in, in 86. New deacons were added in uh, July of 86. Doug Carmack, Jerry Hopkins, and Mike Erickson. Um, and then also in 86, we had to deal with that situation that was developing up at S Avenue. And we just mentioned this just to emphasize the church. This church is going to stand for what's right. And when that congregation got uh, out of hand and started going in a wrong direction, uh, uh, this eldership says we have a responsibility to mark that congregation as an unfaithful congregation. And so there's a congregation up in Riviera called S Avenue. And they've still got a lot of things that are going on up there. They need to change. And uh, that's not to run them down. It's just to emphasize the fact we're going to stand for what's right and stand for truth. And that is so important. Uh, also in 86, uh, Bill Hatcher died. He was out in Texas. And it had been a while since he'd been heavily involved in the work here. But he passed away in 86. And what a great debt we owe to Bill Hatcher. Uh, in February of 87, purchased this land on Leo Lane and we were thinking about, we'll, we will begin uh, uh, just building over there just any time real soon. Had some things that developed in the work and uh, just delayed that. But as, but as early as 87, uh, we bought uh, this eight acres. And uh, uh, the eight acres, as I recall, I recall, somebody left to help me with the numbers. I think 320 or 330,000 is the, is the number I remember for these eight acres. And remember the 40,000 on 36th Street. And of course, since that, we've added the other four acres, and uh, that was when land prices were going out of sight, and it's shameful what we paid for it, but we had to do it. We didn't want apartments over there on that other property like we had on, you remember on 36th Street? They'd throw their garbage over the fence, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, they'd come over, and uh, it became the playground for all, the, all those kids in the apartments, and uh, we'd have broken windows every week. 
And uh, uh, David Sproul Sr. Uh, was the, if you need any windows replaced in your house, just call David Sproul Sr. We kept little panes of windows and almost every week there'd be some broken window in, in that building. And uh, that's one of the reasons we went ahead and purchased that property that was over there. How about these new, oh, the, uh, the first year I've got, Jeff Leslie, if you are here, the first year I have for uh, spiritual enrichment uh, weekend, this was not a statement, this was the first one that we had, was 1987. That sort of fits, I think, right in the middle of all of that. New deacons in 88, Bob Medlock and Greg Morris. Greg is here and he and Michelle are here. New deacons in 1988, Ron Brackett, Stan Bronson, Joe Maloney, and Chuck Milton. And uh, in 1989, uh, you ran across a record of the 8th Annual Road Rally. Remember those road rallies we used to have? And so they would have started, uh, uh, it's hard to believe that was the 8th one, but uh, it, they, they'd been around for several years anyway. And, and those were a lot of fun. And ask some of these older members who were here how much fun those road rallies were. In, uh, in 1990, uh, Ron Brackett began working with this congregation. It also in 1990, new deacons, Tom Brown, Tom is over here. Tom, raise your hand. Nobody will remember you, <laughs> but it is so great to Tom. Tom and I were reminiscing uh, about a sign that's out there on that display out there of things I remember from years past, and it said, Tim Brown, Tom's little boy, and uh, he's not like this now, thankfully, but he was, he was crawling around uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the floor and crawled up through the front pew and and I picked him up and just kept right on preaching. I don't remember that at all, but I do remember your boys, okay? I really remember them. And by the way, his son uh, is now, is now in, planning to go to a school of preaching later this year. Tom's son is. And uh, new deacons were added. Did I say Tom Brown? Yes, Ron Cullum, John Holzer, um, Bill Ingram, who had now come back from the church up in Jupiter and, and had become, uh, came back and worked as a deacon here. And then Bill Jr. was also became uh, Deacon Kevin Keithley and Dirk Summerlot. In, in, in 91, uh, a new elder Stan Bronson, a new de deacon Mike Berrios. Mike is amazing how often he shows up at this congregation. He works for, for FPNL and he comes up about, what, two or three times a year. He just shows up here on a Wednesday night. And so uh, uh, if you haven't met him, go out of your way to meet him. In 92, the announcement was made of the plans for the new building. You remember the statement we had on the card about the new building? Uh, what, what do you want to have in this building? What have you seen and what do you have, uh, uh, what do you think would be a great idea to have in our new building? And to the bottom of the card it says, everybody has his say, nobody has his way. And uh, if you want to see why this building is, is, is so wonderfully developed and designed, uh, uh, it comes from this congregation. And they were the ideas that were presented, I think it was remarkable as we were, as we were drawing the building, the elders had a stack of cards that was this high, and they said, might all look through those cards again. And uh, at that time, we had, uh, we had two men's restrooms and two women's restrooms. And uh, down to the end of the hallway, it was going to be a men's restroom and a ladies' restroom down at the other end, the ladies' restroom in the foyer. But you ladies demanded so much you wanted restrooms. We have one man's restroom and three ladies. And uh, so if you were one of the ladies who said, we want a lot of restrooms, uh, uh, that, that's, that comes from everybody having a say and nobody having his way. And uh, so that's when those plans were, were made and we started developing those plans. And uh, uh, then Hurricane Andrew came through. Remember us being involved in that? We became the purchasing agent for some of those churches down in, uh, in Dade County, and we worked extensively. I, it was just every day. There was a van load, a, a van loaded up with material that they needed, or van loaded up with people to go down and help in that, and that was a great, great thing. In February of 93, well, there's a radio program in 92 also that, uh, that we had on WCNO out of Stewart. February of 93, uh, we began a special study because of some things that uh, uh, that needed to be addressed in this church on marriage, divorce, and remarriage. And so in March of 93, 23 members left to form what they called the Church of, church of Christ of the Palm Beaches. Now, I want you to know there's a congregation here, uh, the one that's down on Jog Road is called the Church of Christ of the Palm Beaches. But the first church to wear that name was that group that pulled away from us when 23 of our members left and started a new congregation. It was a 
Uh, it was just, uh, they did not approve doctrinally of things that were happening here. And this church is going to stand for what's right. It's, it, personalities were not involved in this at all. It was a matter of truth. And one of the most painful uh, times in my life, and uh, uh, I tell a lot of people, that's when my hair turned gray. Uh, it was really, it was, a, it was a great, interesting time in relationship to that. But we kept pushing right on. And so in 93, new deacons, Jeff Feeney, uh, Dan Fuller and Harold Pack became uh, 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 deacons in this church. In 93, uh, do you, you ladies remember this at all? A retreat for the wives of elders, deacons, and preachers. Uh, I just ran across that, and I just wondered if, how many of you ladies would remember you uh, 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 going off on that retreat. What about 94? A young man by the name of David Sproul. Anybody know that guy? He worked as a summer intern, and he was soon, uh, he was a student at Freed Hardham, and he was soon to go come and work with us full time, but uh, I think for about three or four summers, every summer he came and worked with this congregation, working with our teens, and it goes without saying what a tremendous asset David has been to this church, and the debt this church owes to him is absolutely remarkable. 94, new deacons were added. Uh, David Brown, Ephraim Davis, and Phil Porter. Recognize some of those names. New Deacons in 96, Bill Boyd and Gary Jenkins. And then in 97, uh, David and Tracy came to uh, live and work among us. And, uh, and uh, what a great, great asset this family has been to us. In 97, August of 97, there was the groundbreaking on Leo Lane. And so now the time had come for us to, uh, to accomplish what we thought would have accomplished uh, several years before. But uh, we, we uh, started that groundbreaking, and uh, um, uh, the next year, how many, how many of you were involved in laying the sod here? Uh, how many of you still have the bites from the fire ants? The thing I remember about that was somebody kept running around saying green side up, and I'm not sure who was doing that, just make sure we got it out there just right. But I remember uh, pallet after pallet, you'd pick up, a, you know, just a square of sod to put in its place and to be fire ants under it. And to the credit of this church, nobody complained about those fire ants. I, I just, I absolutely stood amazed that day. They'd, they'd lay the sod, sod down, they'd, they'd brush the ants off, and they'd get in line to get their next, their next uh, uh, piece of sod to put down. It's funny what you remember about, uh, about the history of this church. And then in 1998, we moved to Leo Lane. And uh, when you get to Leo Lane, that's when, uh, well... How many of you ever worshiped at 36th Street? We got, we got those hands. How many of you ever worshiped at North Olive? All right, what is that? Is that 15 hands or so? How many of you ever worshiped at Coniston Road? All right, we've got, I think, three Coniston Road hands that I, uh, that I see here. Nell, is that, that's where you met Bill, right? And so uh, it's sort of like fire ants and something like one of those other things, but, uh, <laughs> but that was there. The first wedding in North Olive. Who, whose wedding was that in, in North Was it North Olive, the first wedding? Huh? Uh, June, June, uh, June, June Haynes, June Burleson Haynes Pack. Uh, 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 June was the first wedding that was there in, uh, in that building on North Olive. And I, as I recall, the pews were not in. There's some story about that. Mary Reeves or June's got, got the story about all of that. But uh, there, there's some really, really remarkable stories about that. And the thing that, that uh, was the most difficult about trying to put all of this together was to decide what to leave out. And, and so whenever I, I, I got to, to this point about, about this building, and see, this building is the building that, uh, you know, this is the building our teens know, you know. Our young adults, I doubt very seriously if many of our young adults remember much at all about 36th Street. And uh, some of you will in everything, and we had some great, great stories that came out of that. But, but uh, when, you, when you think about 36th Street, what do you think of? And I did not put dates. I just put uh, some memories that I think really, really stand out. What about the addition of new elders and new deacons? Uh, 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 that, that, pardon me, this is not 36th Street. This is here at Leo Lane. And then we continued those lectureships. Do you understand how special this lectureship is every year? We go out of our ways to, as much as we can to, uh, to bring in speakers that you'd never hear. And one of the reasons we started that lectureship was that 
Uh, some of us were traveling, you know, five, six, seven hundred miles to go to a lectureship, and we said, that's shameful. If we're traveling that far, we need to have something down in this area. And so over the years, we have developed and got a lot of these things going. What about the matter of Mission Sundays? Uh, you know, that's a, is that a highlight of the work in this church? And David, you'll have to help me with that number. Is it 1.5? Are we close to it yet? $1.5 million has been given by this church for Mission Sunday. And uh, I thought about taking some of those slides from Mission Sunday about all of the nations that we've been involved with and all of the, the work that we've been involved with and just how many mission trips we've, we've been involved and all the rest. Um, highlight of the work here, and that's involvement of our work in Paraguay. You stop and think, Chris Fry, who grew up in this congregation, some of you uh, taught him uh, in the Bible classes, and Chris goes to Freed Hardin, was involved in uh, forming that team that's there, uh, and uh, goes down to Paraguay, and we, step, we help support Chris, and then, of course, uh, the work with Josh and, uh, and, and Troy and their families. Uh, what about the homecomings we've had? And I put this down just because of, uh, because of this one. Guys, we appreciate the fact you've come so far to be a part of this. Some of you have traveled a long, long distance to be here. And then the, the matter of coming home Sundays. We, we had, had some of those on 36th Street, and some of these do overlap. And then what about that association with Apologetics Press? Here's that great, great uh, influence that there is in the brotherhood and, and really in the world about evidences about God and, and this great association that, we, that uh, this church has had with them. Some of those seminars with Bert Thompson in just every two or three years, it'd be Bert Thompson down for a seminar and two or, three, two or three years later, Bert Thompson and Bert Thompson. And of course, Bert's no longer associated with, uh, uh, with AP, but Dave Miller and Jeff Miller and, you know, Eric Lyons and... Uh, um, and Kyle Butts, and uh, all of those individuals that are, that are involved in that, and we have a very, very special association. In fact, four of our elders will be gone next Sunday because they're going to go up and meet with the, uh, uh, the men up at Apologetics Press. They serve as advisors to those men, and, uh, and we are also involved in giving credibility and honesty to the salaries of these men so that the money doesn't just come to them, but the money comes to us, and, and, and we... Uh, to, uh, this church is involved in overseeing their sour so that uh, they cannot just go out and make a lot of money dishonestly. Not that any of them would do it, but the Bible says provide things honest in the sight of all men. And I added this one just because it just popped in my mind. That's Vacation Bible Schools. You know, the last few years, have they really, really been something and wonderful? Uh, mission trips by the teens, we could not overemphasize how much we appreciate all that the teens have done. And then I put this down, homegrown missionaries. I'm not sure uh, exactly what I mean by that. And I know, Josh, uh, you came here intending to be a missionary in your life, but we're glad that while you were here working with our young people that uh, we got to know you, and so we sort of count you as a homegrown missionary, even though that was in your heart before you got here. What about Troy Spradlin? You know, marrying Andrea and everything, and it was the influence of this church that caused him to, to make that changes in his life. The success of ladies' days. It's uh, remarkable the, how that pulls, I think, the church together. And, and uh, the Hispanic work, the leadership training classes for our young people, and then the association we have with the work in the Bahamas and Belle Glade and Clewiston and other places around this area, the uh, kickstart your summers, stepping into the Bible, Bible classes for children, Central Florida Bible camps, and then missionaries like Chris and Josh and Troy and Robert Martin, and finally, aren't you glad that in the history of Palm Beach Lakes, there's Easter Island? You know, the Lord says, go into all the world and go and preach the gospel to every creature. And thanks be to God that the most remote place on this earth now has the gospel because of Palm Beach Lakes. Now, don't you dare get the big, the big head but I'm glad that there's a heart in this congregation that he will trust us in relationship to that work. That uh, there, are, there are people there that need the truth, and he's promised people if they're hungry, hungering and thirsting after righteousness, that they shall be filled. Now, in trying to decide what to do in this, I thought, well, just have a microphone and pass it around. But there are some people in this place, if I gave them a microphone, they wouldn't give it back to me for 15 minutes. 
And so I knew, I knew that wouldn't work. But let me tell you what you do. Those of you who uh, uh, are, uh, you know, who have who've only been a part of this church 20 years, would you get with some of these folks from 36th Street and say, and talk about some of those great, great things that happen over there? Uh, what about those trips to Harding? You remember riding the bus and all uh, going, I think two or three summers going to Harding to, uh, uh, for the lectureship or for special days they had out there? And uh, uh, this is just, as, as I look through the list of things that's happened in this congregation, I thought how wonderful it is. Well, that's it. Uh, let's go out and look. Well, we, we, uh, before you leave today, make sure you look at those things in the foyer. And if there's a photo up, photo up there, you don't know what it's all about. It's there for a reason. If you don't recognize somebody in there, ask somebody that's been around here a while, who is this? Tell me about them. There's a story behind every photo that's out there. On, uh, out there. We are dismissed until we begin our worship hour.